to that point, that may be enough for the jury. And given how sweet and innocent this girl was, I mean, they, the first thing the prosecution said was she was referred to as sugar plum. They yes. show a picture of her, and it's just a, just a horrible situation. Um, also joining us is retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Cheryl, great to have you here. I imagine this case must have been tough to investigate. I mean, you have conflicting stories from Miss um, Wiley. Uh, they're trying to pinpoint the evidence and see where it goes. Um, you tell me from an investigative standpoint, what do you think it was like trying to find out what was happening to this girl? Because at one point it was a missing persons case. Well, you know, that's why statements are so important. And it's really important to lock someone into a statement, a version, if you will, very early on. And then you look for variations. You look for ways in which to corroborate or disprove what's said. And then you start matching up physical evidence, forensic evidence, and see how all of that fits together. So it's like a puzzle piece. And you just take your time methodically, unemotionally, if you can. And, you know, I don't know how best you can do that, right? This is a baby. Um, and you just put the pieces together until you get a complete picture. Well, I'll tell you, the prosecution really painted a complete picture in their opening statement, which you don't always see. I mean, they laid out pretty much their entire case. They were on for quite some time. Let's play a little bit more from last week. Okay, Professor, you got to make sense of this for me. Prosecution's given a very strong opening statement. They're providing all the evidence against the defendant. And yet, we didn't hear an opening statement from the defense. They reserved their opening statement. Now, what is the strategy there? I kind of don't blame them. I mean, this, the prosecution, uh, and this is not to minimize the crime in any way, it, it's, uh, you know, the people deserve uh, the prosecution to, to use some, set forth some type of strategy. This is about an emotional hook, all right? So Felicia is not here to testify, like all murder victims. She's a nine-year-old child. And even the prosecution even went into detail about things that occurred after she was deceased. And that's really, you have to be a heartless person to sit and listen to that and not be moved by all these uh, horrific things that occurred to this nine-year-old. What do you follow that up with if you're the defense attorney? Now, I'm not saying that they certainly couldn't have ha made an opening statement, but what do you follow that up with? You know, so the prosecution has just demonized your client and what happened to this young lady. So perhaps it's a useful strategy to wait, let that settle, and maybe get back into the case. Now we're in the mode of trying to see what their strategy is through cross-examination. We heard a little bit where they may be trying to cast blame on Ebony Wiley a little bit, and maybe that's where they're going to go. But sometimes we see opening statements where at the very least they say, hey, listen, you're innocent until proven guilty. There's a thing called reasonable doubt. Talk about the Constitution. Didn't see anything like there, so we're going to see what strategy this goes. Uh, but Cheryl, let me ask you this. You know, Professor Burkhalter made a great point about all these horrible things that happened to this young girl. My question is, in your career, who does these kinds of things? I mean, who would really do these atrocious acts to such a young girl? If we're trying to create a portrait of a, of a rapist and a murderer, who would do this? <laughs> wow. Um, somebody who's really troubled, somebody who may have been a victim themselves. We often find out that, um, you know, when they're captured and go to trial, there's some kind of mitigating circumstance because they didn't get enough hugs or because they were victimized themselves. It's really hard to say as a parent, you know, anything nice about a person who would do something like that to a baby. Um, there's a special place in hell for him. Yep. Uh, nothing else I can really add to that, uh, Cheryl. Uh, let's take a break, because when we come back, we're waiting to jump live. I know they're arguing some motions right now in the Ritchie courtroom. We'll let you know what that's about. 